Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is uh, Felicity Platt, and I have to admit I'm an obstetric anaesthetist. <laughs> You've already heard, heard from some of the presentations this morning, we do things slightly differently. Or as um, Jadeep said, they're normal anaesthetics and they're obstetric anaesthetics. Okay. We do know that the, uh, studies in the past have shown that the, there's an increased risk of awareness in, in the obstetric population. And it's the concern with uh, the welfare of the fetus and the concern about not increasing the risk of uh, postpartum hemorrhage from um, an atonic uterus that have led us as obstetric anaesthetists to give um, light anaesthesia, restricting the dose of thiopentone to 200 milligrams, um, keeping the MAC at 0.5, not giving opioids until um, after delivery, and uh, keeping the FiO2 at 0.5 until delivery, all common features, and led to incidences of awareness um, in the early um, 70s, as reported by Crawford, of up to 1 in 25. So what does NAP5 tell us? Well, the sobering message for us is that um, this population is still dramatically overrepresented in cases of patient-reported awareness. So we've still got a job to do. Um, this is, you've seen this uh, slide before, so I apologise for the blurriness, but what I want to point out is um, that um, uh, obstetrics is still, although um, only a small proportion of uh, general anaesthetics given uh, uh, from the activity uh, survey are for obstetric cases, the, the number of cases reported of awareness it, it is um, wildly overrepresented. Um, there were 16 cases of awareness reported in this population, um, 14 probable or possible, and two syringe swaps. In addition, there were 12 statement only cases. Um, less than 1% of GAs were given for obstetrics, but more than 10% of the um, ARGA cases were obstetric. So it gives you an idea. Overall, um, obstetric patients were somewhere in the region of 12 times more likely to suffer awareness. So uh, that's, that's uh, where we're starting from. I have to get, uh, add a word of warning. It, um, another, another shocking detail was if you look at caesarean sections alone, the incidence was even higher, somewhere between one in 670 and one in 920 cases. But the denominator data uh, is not as robust as it might be. A third of um, um, obstetric cases in the activity survey couldn't be analyzed for one reason or another, possibly because of confusion between the term anesthesia and analgesia, and obstetric anaesthetists spend an awful lot of time providing analgesia. Um, the other thing for um, the obstetric anaesthetists in the audience, I, um, you'll instantly see something that looks a bit odd with this data. If you look at um, this side of the screen, non-caesarean general anaesthetics in the obstetric population, we looked at this long and hard, and we found it hard um, to understand. So it's the, uh, this. Um, uh, general anaesthetics for procedures that weren't caesareans in obstetrics, very hard to interpret. And if you look at um, the hospital episode statistics, they also come across these, these cases and they warn that they're improbable. Even more, to my mind, odd is the idea of a general anaesthetic um, in the obstetric population with no neuromuscular blockade. Because in the UK, we almost always um, protect the airway, and, and, and that requires neuromuscular blockade. So word of warning about the denominator data. But what I would say is, although the actual numbers we might question, this is an at-risk population compared with the non-obstetric population. So when we looked at these cases, what did we see? Well, not surprisingly, um, most of them were non-elective. So I, I've removed category three and four sections. Um, nearly 80% were, were non-elective and, and, and done out of hours. The activity survey shows that two-thirds of out-of-hours work is obstetric, and of that, a quarter is category one. So immediate threat to the life of uh, mother or baby, 
run down the corridor, it's not surprising that most of those anaesthetics are given by non-consultants, because most consultants are not living in on the labour ward, and the only way to get to a Category 1 is if you're actually there. Okay, other characteristics. Um, look at the, the incidence of airway difficulty. So a third of cases, and of these cases, there were four, there were four cases, five cases, um, and there were two cases where there was failure to intubate, which we know from Audrey Quinn's um, mucos study is really rare. So to have two cases of that, one was woken up and one, the airway was managed with a laryngeal mask, is quite startling. Okay? The other is maybe not so startling, the, the incidence of um, obesity in the cases of awareness. And the two are probably linked and, and were linked in several cases. Okay. What about the anaesthetic itself? Again, no surprises. Rapid sequence induction is what we do for obstetric <laughs> cases. And also, in the UK, fairly uniquely, uh, we use thio for our rapid sequence induction in obstetrics. The activity survey shows that this is the case in over 90% of obstetric cases. I'd, I'd just like to point out that in the rest of the world, this isn't necessarily the case. They don't use thio. Um, in, in America, except for executions. Okay, <laughs> they don't use it in anaesthesia. Okay, There's, there was a lot of talk about the dose of thiopentone, and um, the, the conversation suggests that uh, sort of habitual obstetric anaesthetists tend to give a higher weight-based dose. Um, but when we looked at the dose, in a proportion of the cases, in 50% of the cases, the, the induction um, dose was judged too low. The other thing to point out is that in the cases of awareness, um, nitrous was relatively underused, worth bearing in mind. Um, and end-tidal monitoring more tended to be used. OK. Um, you've seen this, this slide before. The, uh, the obstetric gap doesn't refer to transfer of the patients because we don't tend to use anaesthetic rooms. But this is the gap between um, the induction agent wearing off and getting an effective partial pr pressure, the vapour. And if you consider uh, the obstetric physiology, um, you will get a wider gap. Because of the increased cardiac output, you, g you get a fall of the, the induction agent more rapidly and a slower onset of that vapour. So that's, and if you add a low dose of thiopentone and, and low flow <coughs> anaesthesia, you widen that gap even more. This is one point I really want to bring out, is when we looked at the indication for general anaesthesia, this was interesting. There were, two, there were two cases where regional was considered contraindicated, but there were four cases where regional failed, and that's why GA was used, raising the possibility that if there's a problem with regional, you, could, you might consider that there's going to be a problem with general anaesthesia as well. For me, heartbreakingly, there were four cases of, of AGA where there was no clear indication to have used general anaesthesia in the first place. Okay, the episodes of awareness were tended to be at induction and were brief. Um, although we say there were only three cases of adverse sequelae, bear in mind that 50% of the cases were reported within 24 hours, so we, we'll have missed some long, longer-term sequelae. Okay, um, this is an. Uh, I just wanted to put this vignette in because although this patient had a, 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 an episode of awareness, she developed a relationship with her anaesthetist, with her multidisciplinary team before the episode of awareness, and this allowed it uh, uh, sort of enabled her to trust her physicians, and and she suffered no sequelae as a result of this. So to finish with the recommendations, um. We think the possibility of awareness should be discussed as part of informed consent um, b before um, general anaesthesia and obstetrics, given the practical constraints of when general anaesthetics are given. Changes to a GA technique around increasing the dose of thiopentone if you're using it, Cons considering propofol, and that's a whole new conversation, the advantages and disadvantages. Um, Use, uh, we recommend you that nitrous is used um, and, and that uh, consideration is to, to give opioids. Um, if there's a problem with the airway, um, 
it's essential to maintain anaesthesia, and there should be a plan for that um, for all obstetric patients. And failed regional is a risk factor uh, for other complications, including awareness under general anaesthesia. And finally, with the syringe swaps, which I haven't mentioned, caution with antibiotic syringes, because they look like thiopentone. Thank you.